Hey Brian, so I'm going to record this video for you so that uh, in case we don't have time to actually do the demo, at least you can see the, the video and record it when you have a chance, um, or sorry, watch it when you have a chance, whether it's on an airplane or, or wherever you may be. So I'll uh, hopefully go through this in about, you know, maybe 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes and show you what, what um, drone complier is. I've got the dashboard here and then I also did a recording of the um, app on the iOS. So what you're looking at here is the dashboard. This is a demo page. This is a demo. Uh, so we use this um, but this is all demo set up here. So you're looking at where we stand right now. This is the Bald Eagle version and this doesn't include a lot of the upgrades and things that are, are we have planned for future rollouts but right now this is uh, what we're getting ready to release this week. So what you're looking at right now is you've got your operations, your equipment, and your organization. Um, and then you would have your setup features. How do you set up your company, your different user groups, your airframes, your batteries, your checklist, your tax codes, your payment, and then uh, your Android APK. Now for Android, this is where you can download the current APK file or you can go to the Android store um, and download uh, that there as well. iOS, we go through the uh, through the App Store on Apple. Organization, this is our setups. Maintenance, this is where we set up our maintenance logs and our tracking, the equipment details, operations, map, customers' projects, our scheduling, external scheduling requests, and then reports, your monthly reports, your maintenance reports, whatever you want to do for your, your individual company. And then you have your home screen. Uh, this dashboard to me is not where I want it to be. This is a a start, but it, there's a lot more information I want as a manager of a company that I want to see here. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start in with the basics of a customer and what they do and how they manage and set up a project. Um, and we'll go there because that's sort of the meat and potatoes that all of these different entities roll up into. So let's go and we'll click on you know Acme Oil here. So Acme Oil is a fictitious customer that I created. Um, you would start, here's your basic information for Acme Oil, uh, all the information that you would have, their website, their email addresses, any necessary tax codes that you would have, credit limit warnings or hold credits, uh, requirements to supply a purchase order, and then notes. Um, we are currently setting up invoicing within the system. Uh, we don't have it functional yet, but it is something that we are working on, and that's why these sort of placeholders are here for those. Um, your projects, we'll get into projects in a little bit. The requests, this would be something that a customer would who have a, has a mission request, they would have a special login and then they could actually request the operation through this feature. Contacts, various contacts, this can be multiple if you want, and then billing. Again, this is um, billing, it is not functional yet, but it, we are putting these placeholders in so that we can do our, our mission billing right from inside the app. So when you complete a mission and you check it off as done, you can then invoice the customer right there. And the thought is, is that we would take you know 1% or 2% of the invoice, something like that. So let's look at the project. So Acme Plant 1. So project is the overall big project name. It is not the individual flight operations and missions. But you would just do your basic stuff. The customer, all of this is imported automatically. The statistics about the project, so again, once you start flying projects, this is sort of the dashboard for that project where you can see all of the different uh, operational requirements, where they flew, how often they flew, etc. for that project, more for management uh, operations. This is the map page, we'll get into the map here in a little bit, um, billing again, uh, and then the specific missions. So when we look here at the different missions, this is what you actually get into when you're on the mission page. And this is how we would plan a mission and the operation. So um, what you're looking at here are the various missions, the location, the details, aircraft, the pilots, payloads, ground equipment, authority, the documents, the job safety analysis, the risk analysis, checklists, and then you send it out for email approval. And you can see this is red because it has been submitted for approval, but it's not yet been approved. Um, looking at the map though, we'll start there. So this is our map. We own all of the data in these maps. We've created them, we own them. All these overlays are ours and the information contained is what we update in part of our compliance. So for example, you can click on the airport here. This is Easterwood Field, location, 
There's a tower at this field. Here are the frequencies associated with that tower and anything, so you can easily have this for your missions and then know how to contact people when you're out there operating. And then when you're doing your mission planning, you've got the mission manager, the owners, and the contact information. Again, this is all required by the FAA um, to make sure that you have communication and approvals with the local authorities, and that's what we plug in uh, to our databases. So we've almost got this, certainly got this for the US and Australia, but this is part of where we're going for worldwide. Um, and then, let's see, as I zoom back in here, um, the other thing you can notice here, we've got a, um, a NOTAM uh, publicizes the TFR, temporary flight restriction NOTAM. So anytime there's a football game at the stadium here, at the Aggies Stadium, this NOTAM uh, would go into effect. And you can see the ring, this purple ring, is the ring that is associated with that NOTAM. So how do you know that this TFR is active? Well, you can actually just click here, and it will take you actually to the stadium webpage, and you can see the schedules, and you can see what the activities and when they're going. Um, so for your mission planning purposes, you can go right to the stadiums and to the schedules and know that if your mission is going to conflict with an operation and if you're going to be restricted by the NOTAM here. Um, you can see up here we have a heliport, no tower, but here's again the phone number uh, for that at the hospital. And then the other thing you'll notice that's interesting from this particular map is that we've got the last year space. We're close to Eastwood Field. Um, and then you've got these triangles. Basically, these triangles don't really designate a restriction, but these are the approach and departures for the runway, which are just a good heads up as you're doing your operation that along these corridors, you could see lower flying altitudes of aircraft, um, etc. And there's something to watch out for. Now, as we zoom in on the map, what's unique about our maps is that we own these maps. And right now, this is run on Google, but we can do it on Esri maps. We can do it on any mapping database. Um, that we want to use. Uh, Google is clearly one of the easiest, but um, we have a, a program with Esri as a um, basically an Esri partner to um, use their databases and we can put in any of the Esri database feeds or their image overlays, etc. And you can see here we can clearly switch to the satellite feed or the map feed. Um, so right now we can look at the map and say, okay, what's interesting about this map? Well, we're within the following airspace zones and we're close to these following stadiums. Um, so this is important to know, especially when you're planning or approving this mission. Here's just basically full screen on the map. It's pretty simple. Uh, that's going to center us on the area, our flight zone. This is a search for location. We'll, if we're ever going to do something new or search for a new address, this is where we would do that. This allows us to change or add new uh, dimensions to our airspace or flight zone. These are the filters. So here's where we can actually upload different um, filters as well, or, or information to put onto the map. Right now, everything is selected, but you can, we can deselect it, or we can put it back all on. But these are things that we've created, and we could put in any kind of infrastructure or database that we want here. This is uh, basically just a matter of building the, the data set from the map, and then putting it in here, and then creating a filter for it. And then we can set an altitude for those as well. So if we don't want to look at anything at a risk, say above 100 feet, we can change the max altitude and that will apply the proper filter. Um, let's look at, um, this would just center us on the, on the point again, and then weather. The other thing we've got um, here is that we put in our weather. So we also have weather that forecasts out six days. And so look, if we wanna look at weather on December 7th, we can look at the local uh, forecast for that zone. So this is basically your mission planning map. What we have here then is how you would build a, um, an operation. So let's go back and um, uh, I wonder if I should just create a project, but we'll go through these details. Uh, so the location, click on that, and here's the location of what we would, where we would search for and the lat long, the altitude, the address, uh, any emergency contact if that was done here. Um, once you select a mission, once you select that, it turns the buttons green so you know where you are in your mission planning. In details, here's basically the description, plant one operations, flight operations, plant one inspections. Start date, is it just a calendar? Start and end, and a purchase order number that is associated with that. 
um, pilots. Pilots are selected by who's associated. So we have different groups. So you can see we have West Coast test group, a bug test, or ACME operations. Basically, each group is going to have a different set of rules applied to them. So that's what these groups would mean. So if you've got pilots that are approved for ACME operations and you don't want to see all of your pilots, you would only you would select this, and then all the pilots who have been certified to fly for ACME would be allowable or selectable for this mission. Um, the other thing is when you when you select a pilot, you select their name and assuming you know ACME operations, Seth, all these pilots then are approved for ACME operations, start an end date. You've got these uh, scheduling buttons. If you don't want this person to be included on the schedule, you select this. And the reason why that's important is when we talk about creating flight schedules, complicated flight schedules, you don't want to double book people. So by having this option, it allows you then to book time on people, aircraft systems, and then if there's a, a double scheduling issue, it'll show up as a conflict and it will alert you, hey, your, your pilots are double booked or your aircraft are double booked, etc. And, and it keeps you from, from over-scheduling people. Same thing for payloads. For this mission, we don't have any necessary payloads. Ground equipment. Uh, we don't have any need for ground equipment for this type of aircraft, but we can add it here just if we want. Um, same sort of a mindset. Um, where ground equipment and payloads become important, though, are things like one of the aircraft that we're using for DJI for um, GE carries six batteries and it has a huge ground equipment list um, that gets complicated and cumbersome. So you want to make sure that when you're building those missions that you're selecting all the necessary ground equipment so you don't leave anything behind. The authority is just that. It's what are we operating under. So every authority is going to have different rules and requirements. So by selecting the different authorities you're going to have different data sets that you're going to pull from. Documents. This is where we can upload documents into our from our, our library, or we can upload them um, from our um, operating um, uh, library, whatever you, you want to use for um, carrying with you into the field. So you just select your document, whatever it would be. It's going to upload it. We give it doc test. This is OK to delete. And then we'll add. And then that becomes part of what you would take with you into the field. So really important when you've got important information or certifications that you want to carry with you that get pushed to the pilots. Your JSA, this is where your job safety assessment, these are all things that is it legal, is it safe, and then is it mitigated. Um, you can create as many of these questions as you want for your mission planning. And uh, different. we find different people use these in different ways. But on the basic level, you want to have is it legal, is it safe, and, and get the planner to think about these things. But really, this can be things like, it, you know, are you going to be exposed to hazardous chemicals? Are you going to be operating in confined spaces? There are things that you want to do, maybe for Acme Oil, that are questions that you need to solve for while you're doing your mission planning, and that's where you will put this in to make the mission planner think about. Risk checklists are just that, a standard risk matrix, kind of like what we would do in test. Um, and you get your overall risk category, um, this, you know, the crash of drone loss of aircraft, minor, and it's remote, risk factor four, but then you follow the operational procedures, it becomes net negligible and improbable, so the overall risk then becomes a one. So that's okay to proceed. Your checklists, right now the checklists in this case are already loaded based upon the pilots and the aircraft and the authority. Those are, I'll show you later, but those are pre-planned and pre-programmed into the mission based upon those and that's why the, this is green here. And then again this was, um, I'll save it and now it gives me made some changes here. Um, it will send it out for approval. Again it was red so you can see the approval request was sent on the second um, we can resend it because it was updated and then we're waiting on the approval. So we'll save and close. So that's basically how, how you do a mission um, plan or project. Um, you can see here on the dashboard we've got the way to look at the health of our aircraft. The Sky Ranger, it's airworthy. Um, all the association uh, data. Um, registration number, barcodes, if you have a barcode, we have a 
uh, barcode scanner so that you can actually see the scanner, um, scan your aircraft and your battery quickly. Um, that would be associated here with the serial number, associated with the different groups. So it's approved to fly for ACME. Um, default payload, here's the test payload. Default ground equipment, again, uh, the flight time that it started with, and then total flight time and last flight. Checklists, you can see here are the checklists that are loaded into the aircraft automatically. So when you select that aircraft, those checklists will get pushed into the field. Batteries that it uses. Here is uh, any maintenance scheduling that was done or maintenance been done, and then any associated documents. So here we have a flight authorization form um, that is associated with that aircraft. So that is basically uh, what the airframe uh, kind of looks like. Um, we do the same thing for batteries. Batteries become a, a bigger part of um, managing the overall health of uh, of your of your equipment. Um, batteries are something that become very complicated very quickly. You can see you can charge this charge and ideally eventually we'll in the future we'll be able to buy batteries uh, through our app as well but we don't have that um, enacted but we would know sort of what the what the number of cycles somebody has and once you get start to get to the end of the cycles we can say hey your, your battery's about to die and you need to um, go through and and purchase a new battery. So here's what it looks like when we're actually tracking the health and the service life of the battery. So each time you charge and discharge a battery, you get a hit. And as the green bar goes across, you know if your battery health is, is going to be um, nearing its end of its life cycle and if you need to buy a new battery. So this is basically the, the battery health um, page. Um, let's see, under setup, um, organization profile. This is basically where you would go through and you would build in your, your organization homepage, any important other things that would be important to limit who you're operating under, your different maintenance email alerts, your payment information, um, et cetera, that you would have. Uh, API, we have an API now so we can integrate with other uh, software. Any third-party apps that you're integrating with. Right now you can see we're setting up for sweet CRM and zero um, accounting, um, but really any company that we want to integrate with, this is the page where the third-party software would show up. Um, and then super admin is basically your admin uh, functionality where they would set up and run their, their admin functions. Um, under setup, let's see, user groups, this is where you would set up your different groups and the associated roles for those groups that would set up checklists, uh, etc. Um, I don't think we have set up right now to show how we can do data hosting on this on this demo. Um, part of what we're doing as well under um, an operating uh, mindset under the customers or projects, uh, what we would have here is that we these each project then will have a data set to, and we've proven that we, we can easily take in people's flight data and host their data. It's it's clunky right now, uh, to be honest, so that's why we're not showing it here. But the whole point of this is that eventually we're gonna start to sell t um, hosting and data services as well, and you'll access it directly associated with the missions um, that you're flying and have complete traceability with the data and accountability of the data that you're flying, and this will get into the seed software about repeatable flights and inspections and change over time, all of those things that you would want to do um, for your for your missions. So that's pretty much the hardware, or sorry, the um, a very big uh, overview of the uh, drone compiler software and how it operates. Um, I'll, I'll upload this and a video um, of the app working as well, so that you can see the app and, and basically the the mission. Uh, as it functions. So we'd be happy to do this demo for you in real, but since uh, getting scheduled is, is uh, tough to do, I think showing you this way works pretty well. And uh, when we get some chance, we need to sit down and really go through with you uh, in greater detail.